Good morning. Um, welcome to day six of the New Testament mini challenge. Um, leaderboard goes by weeks. Um, let's see. If you're interested in joining, if you're new here, there's a description below. We've got prizes. Um, I can send you a digital copy of the notebook or worksheets you can print out to participate. Um, the way to enter for the prizes is to comment your favorite scripture of the reading, either every day or of the week. Um, okay, uh, I think I really need to write a script for the beginning. Okay. Let's start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. It's Saturday, but I'm up at like 6 o'clock. Why? I don't know. I had a tough week, and so I really thought I would sleep in, but nope. Okay. It's Saturday the 22nd, and we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. If the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come... He would have watched, therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think, not the Son of Man cometh. Matthew 24, verses 43 through 44. To, faith, to faithful members of the church, the Apostle Paul wrote, The day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, for when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction come up, cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape, but ye, brethren, <coughs> are not in darkness, that, 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 that that day should take you as a thief. When a woman is nine months pregnant, she does not know the exact moment when labor will begin, but she does know one thing. The baby will be born soon. <coughs> The signs within her own body so attest. So it will be with the members of the body of Christ, those who are in tune with the Spirit of God and listen to the words of living prophets, will read the signs of the times and thereby know the season in which the Master will return. A lot of the... The reflections lately have been about the second coming, which is a good thing and also kind of scary. But anyway, today is Acts chapter 14, and in this, Paul and Barnabas are teaching, and they're persecuted, and uh, they're in this town teaching, and the, they heal a crippled man. And the people of the town think that they are Jupiter and Mercury. And so a priest of Jupiter brings a sacrifice. And they're, you know, they think that their Greek gods or Roman gods come down among them. And so they're going to do the sacrifice. And Paul heard of this uh Barnabas and Paul heard of this, and they rent their clothes and ran among the people, crying out, uh, why, why are you doing this thing? We're men just like you. Um, we've come to preach the living God to you. And then once the people heard this, uh, it says, Scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And then came certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, I tried to pronounce it today, um, and uh, they persuaded the people to cast Paul and Barnabas out. They had already stoned Paul in Antioch or Iconium or wherever, and they're trying to get these people to not listen to them and to throw them out. Um, Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up. And came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. I think that one sounds a little Irish to be. 
I, d I doubt it's pronounced Derby, but I like Derby. Um, and when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And that's my, my favorite verse of today. Um, uh, and then they ordained elders in the church, and then they went to other cities and preached, and then they went back to Antioch, and they were with the disciples, and there they abode long time. So that's what happens in this chapter. And for verse 22, um, the reason I chose this for my favorite, it was hard to find one that was my favorite today because I wasn't really paying attention to the reading. So I had to read the chapter again to find um, my favorite. Um, and so the reason I chose this one as my favorite was because... Um, it is what the apostles do. They confirm souls, they exhort them to continue in faith, and try to make them understand that it is through tribulation that we enter into the kingdom of God. Um, they, you know, there's the saying that says the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Well, the road to the covenant path is paved with tribulation. There's no one who, not one single soul, who goes through this life without tests and trials and struggles and hard times. And, you know, the the more we understand that, the more we realize that this life is not a free ride, it's a test. If we, um, if we don't suffer from delusional ideas of, main character syndrome like I'm the most important person in the world I'm the main character in this story um like if we realize life is not supposed to be easy if we realize our life is a test we can get through our trials more easily we can get through this life a little bit smoother not like it's like um, the people of Alma. Uh, they had trials. They had them. They were oppressed, right? Uh, one of Alma's former priests had dominion over them and put hard burdens on them and made it so that if they prayed out loud, they would be beaten or killed. But they prayed in their hearts that their burdens would be lifted and the Lord made it so that their burdens, they couldn't even feel them upon their backs. I'm not quoting it directly, but that's the sentiment I'm trying to get across in all my babbling here is that the trials won't go away, but we can deal with them better. We can get through them easier. Um, we're still going to have them. There's no getting around that. Okay. Um, all right. Let's, let's talk a little bit about missionary work. Tomorrow's 15. Uh, I don't know if I should save some of this for tomorrow, but let's just read some. Paul and Barnabas carried on their missions with honor and dignity in places such as Antioch. Elsewhere, they encountered much tribulation at the hands of envious and doubting authorities, Paul even being stoned for his pronouncements. Um, though he was soon thereafter restored to health and continu continued to preach Christ Jesus throughout the region, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. 
we see that the hand of the Lord was outstretched to prosper and bless the work of his chosen servants. In due time, Paul determined to revisit the cities where he had conducted his ministry among the saints and see how they do. That's tomorrow, Acts 15. With Silas, a new companion, he departed, confirming the church. Um, we have a quote from M. Russell Ballard. Through the years I have watched countless missionaries come and go, and I have seen extraordinary things happen in their lives and in the lives of their families as a result. They, the work they are called to do is hard and sometimes discouraging, but because they have the assurance that they are on God's errand, they are able to valiantly serve Him. I often suggest to those who want I often suggest to those who want to know if the church is true that they spend a few hours working with our missionaries. It doesn't take long to learn that no one can do all of the things a missionary does every day without knowing beyond any question that what they are doing is right and true. The Lord does bless his missionaries just as surely as they bless the lives of those they teach and baptize. Difficult languages are learned with astonishing speed and skill. Financially strapped families come families back home find unforeseen means to support their missionaries. Weaknesses become strengths, challenges become opportunities, trials become triumphs, and adversity becomes an adventure in the service of the Lord, another fruit of gospel living. And that's from Our Search for Happiness, An Invitation to Understand the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, Salt Lake City, Deseret Book, 1993. Um, I wonder... I wonder if I should save so I'm gonna save one of the stories for tomorrow I'll read one more one more story and then I'll save one for tomorrow the protecting hand of the Lord Darren head Rodriguez tells of the protecting hand of the Lord in El Salvador in 1980 elder R. Amado was called to be president of the Guatemala City Mission one of the two missions in the country one day, towards the end of his missionary assignment, which generally lasts three years, he and Sister Amado had to go to Mexico City on church business. Unable to get a direct flight, they made reservations for a flight that made a stop in El Salvador, which borders on Guatemala. As they flew over that troubled country, both had strong feelings that it was time to reopen the El Salvador mission which had been closed for about three years because of political instability. Similar feelings on the way home caused them to begin to talk, fast, and pray about the matter. In the summer of 1982, Elder Amado was asked to reopen missionary work in El Salvador and to serve as president there, in addition to presiding over his current mission. With the help of 10 elders, 10 elders, Salvadoran who were serving in the Guatemala City Mission, reopened, he reopened the mission to the delight of the 25,000 or so Latter-day Saints there. I will always remember the feelings of the members and missionaries in El Salvador and the way the Lord protected us, he recalls. It didn't matter how much conflict there was in that country, the Spirit of the Lord guided us to avoid problems with the government, guerrillas, bombs, and everything. The Lord kept us out of danger. He served as mission president in El Salvador for three, for one year and a total of four years in Guatemala. And that's from, from Every Nation, faith-promoting personal stories of general authorities from around the world. Salt Lake City Deseret Book, 1990. When you read stories like that, there's a, there's a sense of, of okay yes he he protected Paul and Barnabas he rescued them and got them out of certain situations but that was in 
the olden days and, and he doesn't do miracles like that anymore. He doesn't manifest his hand like he used to in the Bible. And with stories like that, you realize, yes, he does. If he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then he will manifest himself the way he did then. And the only way you're going to know it is if you're in tune with the Spirit and you can recognize those things. The reason they're pointed out in the Bible is because inspired men saved the stories, wrote them down, and gave them to us. In our day and age, we have to find those stories ourselves, seek them out, seek the Spirit, look for it, um, and record it ourselves. Okay, that's all for today. I'll leave you now with a prayer from a diary of prayer. It is the 22nd, July 22nd, and this one is from Lancelot Andrews. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, the God of our fathers, who turnest the shadow of death into the morning, who hast lightened mine eyes, that I sleep not in death. O Lord, blot out as a night mist mine iniquities, scatter my sins as a morning cloud, Grant that I may become a child of the light and of the day. Vouchsafe to keep me this day without sin. Uphold me when I am falling and lift me up when I am down. Preserve this day from any evil of mine and me from the evils of the day. Let this day add some knowledge or good deed to yesterday. O oh, let me hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee is my trust. Teach me to do the things that please thee, for thou art my God. Let thy loving spirit lead me forth into the land of righteousness. I need to pray better. Prayers like this make me realize I need to pray better. I need to focus harder. I can, I shall, I must, I will do better. All right, that was Acts chapter 14, and tomorrow we do 15. I will see you then. Have a great weekend. Love you all.